next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, a bicycle nightmare. I didn't see the car. A tragic collision could mean death for a young child. Anybody call for an ambulance? Be there as neighbors respond quickly to save a child's life. Then October 9th, 1989, Kathy Swift was at a suburban home in Cheltenham, Pennsylvania, where her eight-year-old daughter, Vicki, and her son, Stephen, were playing together. But before the day was over, they would discover that a split second of carelessness can forever change a life. I don't think any parent has gone through any single day and has not said, don't run in the house. Stephen, Vic, will you take that outside, please? Yo, guys, I said outside. I had one of the couche ball things, and Vicky wanted it. I said, you if you want it? the ball, you got to come and get it. Just had it in my hand and started running. She came in and got her bike, and then Vicky was chasing me out in the street. I didn't see the car. The only time I saw the car was when it stopped. She had her mouth open and she was turning her head and she was moaning. I was scared. While the driver sat stunned in her vehicle, neighbor John Hoffer, an off-duty firefighter, responded to Stephen's cries for help. Mom! I ran over and there she was laying in the street. Vicky, honey! Vicky! There was gas just gushing out of the back of the parked car where her bike went up and punctured the gas tank. All right, hold on now, babe. I made the decision that I had to move her because the gas was pouring down so bad that, God forbid, a spark or something would hit. I said, we would have all been in trouble. We're going to take on three. So that's why I mobilized her head and had Bobby pick her up underneath the middle of her body. When we continue. I could feel my heart pounding. Just thinking, oh my God, don't let her die. Come on, Vic. I saw blood, but I saw no head. Every Monday night, Discovery Health Channel will make you cringe, cry, and wonder, how on earth did they survive? The answer is somewhere between the marvels of modern medicine and the pure power of the human spirit. Going up was easy, coming down was easy. A sudden stop to bother me. All new Impact Stories of Survival, tonight at 8 on Discovery Health Channel. I could feel my heart pounding, and I could feel my feet hitting the sidewalk as I ran. Just thinking, you know, oh my God. It's on, almost like kid. life stops. Vicky's father, Stephen, had been taking a nap when he was awakened by his son's screams. Go ahead. I was trying to convince myself that she was going to be okay. It's just a little bruise. Anybody call for an ambulance? And I just knelt down to her and held her hand and Come said, on. she's going to be all right because daddy's here. Come on, stay with me, babe. Come on. Come on, babe. Stay with me. Nobody let me go to Vicky. Nobody let me see her. But Sue caught me, and my first question was, is she breathing? And I, in fact, lied to her and said, oh, I'm sure she's fine, and really, I did not think she was. My first thought was I thought she was dead. 
Within five minutes, Cheltenham emergency and fire rescue units arrived on the scene, including EMT Harry Hall. The anxiety level just increases incredibly, especially when it's a child that gets hit by a car. She's throwing up 10 feet. She's conscious or No, unconscious? no, she's drifting in and out. We found that there was a laceration behind her ear. There was a golf ball size hematoma on the left forehead. I didn't take nothing off. And when you have an unconscious victim, you never know how serious the injuries are. You can only assume the worst. Come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. Mike. There was no movement, and we also noticed a sign of posturing. So we needed to get her into the hospital as soon as we could. Got a large laceration on the back of her head. I remember pleading with everybody that I knew to pray for her. Come on, Vic. And I remember just crying and saying over and over and over, don't let her die. When eight-year-old Vicky arrived at Abington Memorial Hospital, a trauma team was waiting, including nurse Nancy Hess. A lot goes through your mind as a mother and as a nurse. You start thinking along the lines of, this could be one of my children, or where are my children right now? Take it through. One, two, three. Because Vicky was having trouble breathing, she was put on a ventilator. X-rays and a CAT scan were taken to determine the extent of her injuries. She's doing, but right now she looks okay and doesn't look that badly injured. We knew she had a skull fracture. They weren't sure about her ankle. And we thought, boy, we lucked out. The doctor had asked to see us again and told us that she had slipped into a coma. The results of the CAT scan showed that Vicky had a critical head injury. You're jubilant for the good news, and then all of a sudden they drop a bomb on you. Vicky was transferred to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where she was examined by the director of the trauma unit, Dr. John Templeton. After she was here, we determined that she wasn't wearing a helmet. The main concern is that, that told us that all of the force was transmitted directly against her skull and therefore against her brain as well. Vicky was put under the care of neurosurgeon Anne Christine Duhaim. The thing that one worries about the most is pressure inside the head caused by swelling of the brain. Because of the injury. And that is a serious problem that we have to work very hard to control. You know, we talked about those pressure waves. We're beginning to see some. Her initial pressure was okay, but over the next uh, 24 hours, it began to go up in spike waves. That night, around 3 o'clock in the morning, the doctors and the nurse came in to notify another parent that their child had just died. And at that point, I said to myself, oh my God, when's it my time? No, we don't want you to. If she had a period where the pressures went up and in spite of everything we couldn't control them, then she would have gone on and become brain dead. I just felt like everything just disappeared. And I didn't know. Is she going to be normal? Is she going to be all right? She's not doing that now. In fact, she's acting much more normal. After two and a half weeks, Vicky showed real signs of improvement. I just had this feeling come over me, like a big sigh of relief. You know, how you take a big cleansing breath and everything's cool and calm. And I said, she's going to be good. She's going to be fine. There's nothing going to be wrong with her. She's going to recover. Vicky underwent a year of therapy to improve speech and motor skills affected by the injury to her brain. Three years after the accident, her recovery is remarkable. People marvel when they see Vicky today and then they hear her story. And sometimes I think, was it real? Because Vicky is so good. <laughs> she brings this exuberance to life. She's the kind of girl who you know is going to get somewhere in life. Because I don't think she's going to let anything stop her. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> the prize still holds it up. Yeah, I know. In school, I'm doing pretty good. Well, I like to read, and when I grow up, I want to be a teacher and an author. 
The last real ringing of any consequence occurred on February. I was happy that she came out all better. Well, she's still that like, perfect sister. If I had the radar from when they tell I'd probably say about a nine. There's still things she has to work on to be a ten. Nobody comes through an injury like this completely the same person that they were. Vicky is awfully close, and we're delighted. But I don't think it's fair to minimize that she's had a serious injury. And while she has recovered, lasting effects may show up later. The only really good treatment for a brain injury is to prevent it from happening in the first place. In 1991, the American Trauma Society selected Vicki as a spokesperson and poster child. Together with the Safe Kids campaign, they promote the importance of bicycle safety. There has been a drastic change in our little community here. Before Vicki's accident, I never saw anybody with a helmet. And now even the littlest guy on the littlest two-wheeler had a helmet on his head. I like being outside riding my bike and roller skating. And I wear my helmet so if I fall and my head hits the ground, I know it won't get hurt because I have my helmet on. Bike helmets that meet safety standards have been shown to reduce the risk of brain injury by almost 90%. I wouldn't wish the guilt of not having a bicycle helmet on anybody. And if because of my ignorance, or my negligence, she would have died. I couldn't have forgiven myself. Kids balk at them. There's no doubt about that. But as a parent, that's your responsibility to teach your children and to protect your children. No helmet, no bike. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.